uh, excited and pleased to join uh, all of you uh, this afternoon. So uh, thank you, uh, IBTE, for organizing uh, this seminar today, uh, particularly uh, Mr. Dean Kessler and uh, Nick. Uh, where are you? Oh, yes, uh, just behind. But thank you very much for doing this. Uh, in close cooperation with uh, Northwest, Northeast Indiana uh, Regional Partnership. Once again, thank you very much, Sarah, for doing this. Also, we have uh, uh, Northeast Indiana uh, Works. Thank you uh, very much for being part of this program. So we had, as Nicole said, had such a wonderful uh, tour of ID, ID Tech uh, this morning. Uh, I came to Chicago uh, end of February last year, and uh, my office covers 10 states in Midwest. Probably I have been to, say, eight or nine community colleges across the Midwest. But I was so impressed by the way education is conducted here at Fort Wayne and a very distinguished leadership of Dean and Kessler. So extensive national programs and the say, focus, focusing on the value to industry, a value to students, value to the regional economy. So it was really clearly uh, felt. Uh, by the way, uh, you introduced uh, your programs to all of us. Thank you uh, so much. So this is my actually third visit to uh, Fort Wayne uh, this year. So maybe a bit unusual for Japanese Council General Press in Chicago to come to Fort Wayne uh, so many times in one year. But first, back in February, uh, what we call grassroots uh, caravan uh, initiative uh, brought us to uh, Fort Wayne. So that was uh, February. So we have been bringing this grassroots caravan to various parts of Midwest, uh, mainly uh, in Indiana and uh, uh, Illinois, probably five, six times, times each. We have visited those uh, places where already there, already there is a Japanese uh, company's presence, uh, investment, and to seek uh, further opportunities of collaboration, cooperation, or promote further business partnership between Japan and local areas with the participation of local organizations, local business community, local political leaders. Uh, we have been really trying to promote uh, Japan uh, Midwest uh, partnership uh, through this uh, caravan uh, visit. So uh, I was also here back in May to attend the Cherry Blossom Festival at the library here in Fort Wayne. Actually, I brought uh, five saplings of cherry blossom trees. So hopefully down the line in the near future, the cherry blossom blossoms will be in full bloom sometime in the spring in Fort Wayne too. So we are focusing on North Northeast Indiana for the future. More than 3,100 people work at 24 Japanese companies here in uh, Northeast Indiana. That was a 140% jump in jobs in the last five years. So now plans are underway for Northeast North Indiana leaders to visit Japan next month to do more business. Across Indiana, there are almost 290 Japanese companies providing 65,000 jobs for years. But I must point out there are, are two issues we are facing. So tariffs and the shortage of skilled workers. So we are not happy at all with the U.S. steel and aluminum tariffs, so which is uh, introduced under Section 232 in the interest of uh, U.S. national security. But I think we are the allies. Uh, even more worrisome is the proposed 25% uh, autos and auto parts tariffs. So it disregards the huge number of Japanese vehicles that are manufactured in the U.S. and in the state. Also, it disregards the million plus direct and indirect jobs. Uh, but two weeks ago in New York, a big step uh, took place. Prime Minister Abe and President Trump announced talks on the trade and agreement in goods, or TAG. The US has hit the pause button on the auto tariffs, at least for now. So we still want the U.S. to come back to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We, s we still think that's the best framework for uh, U.S. to be part of. Now, among 11 countries, so 12 TPP countries minus U.S., we have formed or agreed upon new uh, framework. 
which is called the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. Sounds a very long name, but abbreviated CPTPP, still longer than TPP. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in recent weeks, uh, changing names of those frameworks are very common, like uh, NAFTA became uh, something different. So today, it's all about workforce development. I often hear from Japanese executives in Indiana and across the Midwest about the challenge. Recruiting highly skilled workers is difficult due to the booming economy and low unemployment. Workforce development is a hurdle that Japan and Indiana face together. It is a key topic in the US-Japan economic dialogue uh, between Vice President Mike Pence and Deputy uh, Prime Minister. Taro Aso initiated last year. As part of the follow-up to their meeting, we actually brought a special grassroots caravan on workforce development to Purdue University uh, last May. So we must stay ahead of the curve by having young people gain the right skills for the future. Then we can meet rapidly changing technology on the factory floor such as AI and IoT. So we need more collaboration between Indiana state government, local development authorities, colleges, and Japanese uh, companies. So we are already witnessing this at the Japanese big three in Indiana, so to speak. Ivy Tech provides leadership training and equipment training for Honda in Greensburg. Purdue's Polytechnic Institute is on the Subaru campus in Lafayette. The University of Evansville and Vincennes University have joined with Toyota already. And all of those joint programs <coughs> have been so successful. We are so happy the way that car companies and the local educational institutions, community college and universities have been moving forward in recent years. So today we have a very, very strong team of presenters. So I'm sure that Nicole will introduce each one of those. So that's why I will not uh, uh, do that. But particularly, we are so pleased to have Tada-san uh, from Tokyo. Thank you very much, Tada-san. I know Tada-san is going to talk about how the transformation of manufacturing will affect the future vocational training. Now, we are so, so lucky to have uh, Sasaki-san from Ohio, uh, who is going to talk about uh, reverse uh, uh, logistics. So it sounds a little bit a difficult topic, but I'm sure that Sasaki-san will explain in a very, very uh, simplified <coughs> manner so that we all understand uh, where this logistic industry is going uh, forward. And also we have uh, one uh, official from our embassy in Washington, D.C., the uh, Hisano-san, Katsuto or Hisano. Uh, he came uh, today uh, from Washington, D.C. for just for uh, this seminar. He has had a very good experience of vocation training back in Japan. I'm sure that all of you, all of you will be benefit from uh, what Isano uh, uh, san uh, has to talk about uh, later on. So without further ado, so let's enjoy the seminar. Let's learn something about the workforce development this afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you. So again, I've we're going to start off with two presentations. Uh, the first one will be by Mr. Yuki Otada, who arrived yesterday from Tokyo. And then he'll be followed by Mr. Sasaki. Uh, and after our presentations, we'll move on to a panel discussion to bring in a couple of moderated questions and then any questions from the audience that you might have. Um, Mr. Otada uh, is chairman of Sunrock Institute as well as chairman of the board of CPEX. He's also a senior advisor to the Sojits Research Institute and a uh, Nitobe College Fellow at Hokkaido University. Thank you, Matt, very much. Can you hear me? It's a kind of TED Talk style, so that, uh, do you know this? Five hour energy extra. <laughs> I learned today that, that this is a product of this local, uh, for the veins, and then, because I need it in some point of the presentation, because uh, I just arrived yesterday, and then after that, uh, I have a, uh, uh, my position is somehow in your bio, uh, you please take a bio. And one third of my uh, see, uh, uh, lifetime was uh, 
more business oriented, more like a greedy businessman. One third is a, a academic size, like a pedantic scholar. I'm now teaching at the two uh, university in uh, uh, Japan. One of them, Hokkaido University. I have to be there on Friday. So that it's a very short uh, stay this time. But it's fun to teach. Not only to teach, but we have, uh, we learn so many things. So that first of all, I don't know you. So those who are the students of the Ivy Tech, please raise your hand. Okay. And those who are the professor or instructor of the Ivy Tech, many. Okay. Those who are the supporter of the Ivy Tech. And all right, thank you very much. So, um, because in my class at the Hokkaido University in Japan, I'm teaching uh, this uh, season from AP student from high school through the graduate school in the one classes. It's a diverse. It's a total diversity. And then uh, this session is a working progress seminar. It's not the kind of problem solving seminar for uh, uh, vocational training, but a lot of I like to have a kind of session as a problem identification so that uh, I'm, I like to your feedback is quite important because the first things are from products out to marketing. Product out is a concept for the 30 years for the production uh, basis like uh, through the just-in-time delivery with the Kaizen. Kaizen means a continuous improvement on the, on the ground. But uh, product out is a rather B2B uh, concept. Market in is a total reverse, like a B2C based on a C2B feedback. Market has uh, so many dominant law to play the industry. So the so that's kind of the message I would like to illustrate it uh, before the Mr. Sasaki's very innovative seminar uh, speech after that. So my role is somehow three uh, points. So uh, primary role is provide guidance on the important seamless connection between number one, product out manufacturing and my marketing service. So I, this is I uh, already explained. The second one, uh, there is a disparity between the analog generation and the digital generation. It's very important. There's a word AI and BI. Used to be people say that uh, that is the before internet and after internet. But now that I would like to say BI means before iPhone. And AI is after iPhone because internet See, uh, uh, provide us uh, so many uh, uh, information searches on the ground using the PC. But the, uh, with the iPhone, you can go anywhere to reach out, even from the say, uh, uh, home or uh, in a car. So that's changed the world. But uh, do you know when iPhone introduced in the market? Not less than 10 years. I'm using this iPad is uh, just this in introduced at uh, 2010. So the analog generation, I'm a typical analog generation. Mm -hmm. And then our, our way of approach is totally different of the digital generation, especially millennium. So that we need to consider these kind of uh, generation gap. At the same time, the third one is very important. That's why I'm here on Ivy Tech uh, this morning to see uh, what watch the, uh, the classes. Because uh, we have to, we have been doing the P3, so-called uh, public-private partnership, to uh, address the issue. But I think the academic partnership is also very, very important. So that uh, all these mind, and I try to catch up with the, uh, see, uh, the progress of all the changes. And then uh, the, pro Starting point is something like this. Two years ago, so when the President uh, Trump uh, was chosen as the next president, and then we are at a loss. What's going on uh, between the U.S.-Japan relationship? So that uh, I'm a part of the business community, and then it's, 
I was the chairman of the America to Japan Relationship Committee. At the same time, I was assigned the chairman special envoy to the United States. And then at that time, Washington was uh, totally messed up at the loss, disappointment. But so that we tried to go to the subnational level. And then among the states of the United States, Indian states was quite uh, positive to welcome us. So that uh, it's not the Mike Pence we choose, but the latter. It's your enthusiasm that the Japanese business community uh, try to get, uh, get in touch with the future relationship through the subnational level. Of course, as you may know, that the Japan is number one already. Japan's firm is the number one in international investor in 40 states and the number two in nine states. But uh, that is the 2013. Uh, at that time, see, uh, states of Indiana, there was counted, uh, their count number was 191 company. But nowadays, I think it's very close to 300 companies. So that there is a kind of original foundation that uh, we can work together. So I delivered this message uh, last February. And then uh, through the collaboration with the, uh, the Governor Holcomb and the uh, uh, ja Japan, Japanese business community, we found out that one of the examples of such initiative to enhance in the partnership with the state's government. So there was a three, like this, so many. In Fort Wayne, yeah, there was a kind of meeting. You know, I'm, I'm an analog generation, but the using this type of the finger, so we can control <laughs> your uh, interest. And then the important uh, uh, MOU was made thanks to the Ito-san, Council General of Chicago. And then we uh, made a co collaboration between Indiana and Japan, signed MOU or collaboration on sept last September. In the area of cooperation, yeah, including workforce development. And also there was uh, so many other uh, collaboration area is lined up. And then most of them I found out the curriculum and the IV Tech this morning. So that is quite, IV Tech is the entity that uh, we can, would like to work together. Of course, state of uh, Indiana offered uh, so many uh, initiative using those uh, assigned uh, uh, secretary career connection and talent as well as uh, so many uh, work ready grant, employer training grant, something like that. So this is a kind of the offer from our side. But the how you received uh, on the IB Tech as well as student, I would like to know that. And then uh, I made a, we made a field research in Columbus, Indiana. And then we found out quite an issue because the Japanese company cannot increase production because of the manpower shortage. So it is difficult to receive unexpected order. So people, uh, the com Japanese company there said, no, no, no more foreign investment, please, because we, we have a, a labor shortage issues. At the same time, state of Indiana, so we, we bid it on the ground for 30 years, like starting from Subaru, Honda, uh, Toyota, so that the workers there is now reached into the retirement ages. So that the, we just need a direct con, uh, replacement requirement, but at the same time, new industry uh, is available through the evolution of IT, uh, uh, material or a AI and IT. So we tentatively uh, set up the two goals in the vocational training as well as the internship program. But, uh, we focus on to the Japanese SME because as uh, Council General Ito-san mentioned, Honda, Toyota, Subaru, or major corporation has its own R&D center uh, and the joint program. Uh, and then they are working very, uh, very good now. But the majority of the uh, Japanese corporation here in the state of Indiana is tier one, tier two, uh, company that is s uh, most of them the small and uh, medium size. So 
that kind of the finding is uh, our uh, uh, our uh, start of our search in uh, the program identification. So that uh, that was the last year, and then oops. So going back to change of 80s mindset was so going back. And I would like to uh, touch on a little bit about the lesson from the vocational training in Tennessee in the 80s. See, uh, in the 80s, uh, t Tennessee State and Nissan de developed a new joint program, auto production manuals for new section chief and the workers, Japanese uh, QA, QC, Kaizen training, and Japanese corporation culture, Japanese language training, etc., etc., is introduced for the first time. And at that time, the governor, was uh, now the Senator Lamas Alexander. He was very, very young at that time. But uh, th that is why I introduced this story is, I was at the section chief instructor for the Japanese corporate culture and the Japanese language training. So at that time, there was a corporate culture gap between the Japanese community and the US community. So that uh, I try to use the very old anecdote of the samurai spirit or gambarism, that means uh, so many group-oriented approach. But that is workable in the 80s. So that uh, the illustration of Hollywood movies on the vocational training, internship in the 80s and the 20s, uh, 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 2010s, I would like to show this because instead of uh, explain, uh, explanation on uh, my poor English. I think it's better to see that. Have you ever seen a gang hole? All right, you like it. <laughs> Something like that. Oh no, this is one. Just uh, right there. Yes. All right. And so try it again. Gang hole. Back to 1986. Hey, Hans, today is the big day. Give him hell, boy. Hey, I'll give it to him. We're counting on you. Hey, Mrs. Broniak, this face is on the case. Hans Stevenson invited the Japanese. You know, my dad was over here with the Army in, uh, I guess it was 1940. Hey, did you decorate this place yourself? To put his town back to work. Welcome to your first day with the San Motus. <laughs> now, Everything is on his shoulders. Let's do it and do it our way. I thought it handled great. And it's all in the hands of Ron Howard, the director of Splash and Cocoon. This is great. What could possibly go wrong? Good question. Let's go find out. We must be a team. In Japan, our goal is a 0% defense. How'd you slip by? Everyone thinking only of company. See, we have our own way of making cars. This is Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes? I've heard a lot of talk about how good the Japanese businessmen are. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't get it. I don't see it. I'm not impressed. You're fired. He's coming! I can't stand it anymore! Safety glass. You feel. They're closing down the factory and going back to Japan. I'm calling all the guys, and we're coming over to get you. Oh, uh, drown yourself. Uh, At least take off your watch. Look, I would love another chance. I know we could do better. Can we do it? Can we do it? Can we do it? Paramount Pictures presents... I came to tell you you were great tonight. I was really proud of you. Michael Keaton. Whoa, yikes. Whoops. Oh, whoa. In a Ron Howard production. Is it just me or do you hate the way your shorts feel when they get wet? I actually kind of like it. Really? Gung ho. That's all, folks. All right, so this is a gung ho. And then Michael Keaton, the Batman used to play something like that. The Japanese auto firms, the typical situation was 80. It's a kind of, uh, not 100%, but 80% close, was the kind of corporate culture between Japan and the United States. But uh, back to two, now the 2013, the internship. Have you ever seen this internship movie? All right, you'll like it. This is analog digital generations gap. It's much, much more than the, the, uh, 
the, the gap between Japan and the uh, United States. Though. Take a look. Still, sorry, I'm a part of the analog generation. <laughs> but still, I can survive. I defy you to crush this course and not get psyched out of your mind. I'm gonna pop some bags. Only got $20 Ooh. in my pocket. The chrono shock 13. They didn't tell you, did they? Your company is closed. You closed the company? Everything's computerized now. People have a deep mistrust of machines. Have you seen Terminator? Yeah. Or two? Mm -hmm. Or three? Or four? All of us. Vic, I got it. Google. You got us a job at Google? Not a job job. It's an interview for an internship that could lead to a job. Uh, Nick, this might be the last chance that we got. Come oh, in here. You got to come in closer. Yeah. We won't be able to no, see you. See, 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 see those small web cameras? No, kitchen you to cheek. Uh, we can see you guys. Okay, good. Great. You got it. Hi, my name is Billy. We can hear you <laughs> fine as well. Oh, great. Are you ready for this? Welcome to Google. This will not be your average internship. We're looking at some sort of mental hunger games against a bunch of genius kids for just like a handful of jobs. That's a Sharpie, by the way, genius. That's my fault. Hey, yo, it's time to get the party. I'm Lyle, one of the team managers. Pound me. Oh, normally just putting the, the fist out without the words is all that's necessary. Come on, bro. Oh. Fist me. Get up in there. Yeah, that's <laughs> definitely not right. Your interns? Yeah. Shut up. Deal with it. You're so old, though. <laughs> I thought you were important. Sometimes the long shots pay off the biggest. Our team's a joke. You guys gotta start believing. This reminds me of a little girl from a steel town who had the dream to dance. She had to strip down to nothing. She had to sit in that chair and arch her back, and she reached up and pulled the chain to nowhere and doused herself with water. Flash dance? You're talking about the movie from the 80s. Yeah, you're damn right I am. Oh, boy. <laughs> Have rules. The red paddle indicates no. <laughs> Green paddle, yes. Having a beer with your boss. You want to grab a cold one with me? You let me know. I will not be grabbing a cold one. Okay, so if you're interested in, please <laughs> visit the website and uh, remaining thing. So analog generation gen generation gap, I, I believe, is much much better than the co corporate culture now, and then we have so many challenges. But at the same time. The mixture of these combinations can also create uh, new opportunities. So that, uh, of course, uh, see, within your uh, lifestyle, maybe within five years, ten years, you may encounter the new challenges, but the new uh, opportunities also. So it's a kind of problem identification, how we can work together. So that uh, how we can, that means that not Japanese, not American, but uh, between the student and the professor and the businessman uh, can collaborate each other. So beyond the just just in time uh, and the kaizen system, traditional vocational training for support Japanese transplant factory in the 80s still exists and they still need it because uh, we need to keep the operation so that uh, through the kai uh, continuous improvement through the, uh, IT and the robotic introduction. We have to boost the uh, production. But at the same time, new training for hybrid industry is available anywhere. Now, for example, like this, you know, this is the EV. And then, uh, this is the old type of EV. Be can you tell that? Because motor is uh, connected to the wheel with uh, dr drive shaft. But uh, for example, NTN drive shaft produced on the world uh, uh, the biggest in, uh, production in the state of Indiana. But the NTN drive shaft per se try to uh, convert their uh, business style, and then now they are trying to develop the in oil motor, in oil motor in in four uh, the tire. In such a case, the drive shaft is no more necessary. And then the battery instead, inside, can be battery in oil motor, and then wiring, connect, uh, communic uh, any kind of the C uh, CPU can be the next generation of the automobile. So that's kind of big, big change. Also, like this DCM. Do you know DCM? Data communication module is equipped with the newest model of the Toyota uh, 
uh, this is uh, Corolla Sports. And uh, this feature is totally connected all the time. So that uh, when kind of driving condition, accident, or air tire pressure can be monitored. And then in the next generation, steering wheel can deliver your uh, like a heartbeat or breath pressure or in a thermal temperature so that the uh, hospital uh, is ready or insurance company can also ready. <laughs> so those kind of things that happen at the same time. For example, like this. So this is a kind of uh, so many sensors available to monitor for the ADS, uh, advanced driving assistance system. And those are the long range LIDAR. LIDAR means a laser, uh, like a blue laser or fluorescence or whatever, and a camera, and uh, ultrasound. See, so many uh, monitor sensor is available, but the producer of this sensor is something like a, uh, Sony or Pioneer or Panasonic. So it used to be just a kind of audio, uh, radio and component uh, that type. But uh, now they, those, are the com those company are the main frame of the next generation. So we have to consider all these things in mind. And then in, in case of like a de uh, data communication uh, module, so the consumer user has a more bigger voice to uh, define the, uh, the uh, automobile type and then even before that, even more than that, there was uh, so many challenges on the way. You know, I'm always uh, like to show this because I, I showed this for many, many times of the food years. So we can do it in human power. That is the 80s. Nowadays, maybe the robotics and human power working together. But uh, in the next generation, AI, Android can work together uh, completely well. So. Have you ever been to the Lafayette Subaru production site recently? They modified every uh, say that's a, a couple months. And the m newest uh, stamping line was well, that there was a two line, and the one line was uh, conventional human power and the uh, robot working together. But on the newly established stamping line, it's just the AI and the robotic only. Of course, the one person monitor all the time but uh, just doing nothing to watch the monitor so that's kind of things that uh, we have a challenge in from automobile manufacturer to diversified high-tech industry and uh, again high skill labor force is quite important sorry so summer and uh, new threat is also create the new challenges so that the opportunities also uh, is available so that for those who learn skill uh, at the Ivy Tech, so pretty considered how the world is changing dramatically. So new business, AI, AIT, ADAS, case. Do you know the case, right? Connectivity, autonomous, shared electric, and mass mobility as a service. So those types is now coming in one by one uh, within five years. So that the labor force gap, of course we say that the new uh, skill gap in the new fields, working in retirement uh, is already ma mentioned. But at the same time, low labor force participation labor force participation rate in the state of Indiana is uh, I, th I believe the lower than the average, like a 62%. People stay, prefer to stay, especially women and the aged people. But uh, through the so far, uh, see, uh, there, will, there will be uh, so many working places available, and not only in the factory, but also the office or even a home. So how we can include it, those kind of un, uh, unused labor force. So that all, in, see, uh, the conclusion shows that the vocational training, internship, apprenticeship, is focusing on SME is quite important in the state of Indiana. So 
So that's why I came over here to Ivy Tech. There's a 300 Japanese corporation, and then there's a so many places, Ivy Tech. Wow, it's amazing. So why don't we work together? So that is my message. And then how uh, or why we need it, do it. Because I would like to put in, uh, uh, hand over to Mr. Sasaki, who can explain the gr innovative, grand new technology in a new market. Because uh, those new market is necessary uh, to consider in our joint program so that uh, for the further uh, information, I would like to ask Sasaki-san to cover. And then for the further Q&A or feedback, please give us. And then in the following session as a panelist, uh, panel discussion, we will we'll, like, invite more people uh, to the, um, uh, to the po not the podium, but the in, anyway, in the front line, and they would like to in make an interactive uh, com communication with you. Thank you very much. Hi, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you for having me today, and then thank you for coming out to this uh, seminar. Let me see. Uh, yes, my name is Yoshihiro Sasaki. I'm you know, chairman of CEO of Funai Service Corporation located in Ohio. Uh, today, uh, yes, I'd like to talk about, it was this title from you know, product out to market in, beyond just in time, the Kaizen, that sort of thing. But and uh, as a subtitle says, you know, where does in innovation you know, come from? So I want to touch about this. I don't know if you know, FSC is innovative enough, but we're trying to be in like you know, everyone else. And then hopefully, you know, by the way, FSC is not a big company, you know, mid to small size company, you know, 30 or 40 employees. And then we use you know, 10 per associate, like you know, 100 in a peak time. So I was told by Mr. Kessler yeah, oh, today, you know, the you know, this, you know, area, you know, is supported, you know, or, you know, mid to small company join the industry too. So hopefully, you know, this presentation a little bit, you know, help for you to take one step forward to be innovative as, as a company. And uh, let me see. So, yeah, this is a little bit, you know, quick introduction by myself. So I have a over 10 years of experience in, in uh, reverse logistics. And then maybe you know, majority of the people might not be familiar with the reverse logistics, but uh, you know, if you buy product or merchandise, you, know, you, can make, you can return for free, right? No penalty, no nothing. But it's just US and then UK in the world. So if you do the same thing in Japan, you, know, you have to pay you know, a lot of penalty. So, but this is kind of... Uh, commercial practice applied in the uh, US. But, and then, you know, reverse logistics, you know, the market, as a market, it's, it's growing, which means, you know, more people, you know, like to return, you know, and, then, and then, you know, we, you know, or reverse logistics market side have to process very efficient manner. And then that's kind of our requirement or expectation to reverse logistics, by the way. And then, you know, we use the Kaizen mindset and then kind of aiming to kind of innovate, you know, reverse logistic itself. Uh, and then this is the nature of reverse logistics a little bit. So assuming, you know, most of them are not familiar with this. So first of all, you know, nature, as in nature, operation is in between manufacturing and the warehousing. So we have a big warehouse, like a Ford logistics company, but we receive product, those are product, by the way, TB, return from the market. And then we have a line like this. And then we have an operation like that. We hire people. Again, you know, 100 people associated in the temple associates in the peak season. And then we process the unit and repair the unit and then put in a brown box and then sell as a refurbished goods, you know, to the secondary market. So this is kind of, you know, general, you know, introduction of the you know, reverse logistics itself. And then, you know, as you see, you know, as you can imagine, re returns units are fully mixed into with various models. Sometimes uh, we receive TV, sometimes we receive underwear or shoes. So it's up to the store. So if store doesn't sort out nicely, we receive those type of things. But we have to, you know, sort out very nicely, carefully, because, you know, 
any single item is an asset to the customer. So, but again, you know, the very mixed. So that's why, you know, automation is not possible, you know, currently, you know, although maybe in the future. And then, you know, this is, as you imagine, you know, labor intensive operation. So we have to rely on people. So in general, relatively economical labor used, like, you know, $10 an hour or $17 an hour. So this is the nature of reverse logistics. And then, you know, I want to talk about, you know, by going through or going by the history of, you know, FSC. So in 2008, you know, we started operation. But uh, at that time, it, you know, due to multiple reasons. So we have to, you know, we, you know, before 2008, we used the uh, outsourcing company, like a professional company, you know, to take care of the other return. But they, their job was kind of pretty, you know, poor, poorly done. So that's why we have to take back that responsibility function back to us. But unfortunately, you know, we didn't have any professional people in there. So that's why, you know, those, you know, four headaches we had at the time. And you know, first of all, you know, again, no professional train members and then no operation process. We saw, you know, the outsourcing companies and operation, but we didn't have, we didn't own the operation. So, and then we didn't have IT system and then we have no budget is very tight. So what we did was, yeah, we were like that. <laughs> and then, you know, <laughs> but the only thing we, we, sh we were able to do, and then, you know, it, you know, the, th this was, you know, we didn't have a process. That's why, you know, we just, you know, we can only do is the, you know, utilize logical thinking, you know, what we have to do, what's the requirement, you know, what's the step to take, and then, you know, design process from very scratch, and then that's, you know, kind of one solution for us. And also, no IT system, we didn't have an IT system, but reverse logistics have to be supported, good IT system, because receiving from receiving to ship out, inventory, repair, you know, function check, all process has to be supported by IT system, but we didn't have it. Then around 2008, it was very common to outsource, you know, IT system development, but we didn't have a budget, so we made the decision, okay, let's make all system in-house. This is our direction and the solution too. And also we use, again, no budget, so we use the open source software, so which is almost zero cost. And also, this is an important part. So no professionally trained members, but we had good members inside. So that's why you know, we assign the duty to our associate, you know, performance-based. You know, regardless of experience, regardless of education, age, gender, we, we, don't have a, we didn't have a luxury to care about that. So that's why you know, we just go by the performance-based. So it worked out very nicely. And then as a byproduct, we, you know, we are able to set kind of corporate culture of going through this, which is, again, performance-based and also in-house development. I'm going to touch on a little bit more detail later on. And then fact-based and then logical thinking. So those are kind of corporate culture. This is, you know, I think this is asset to FSC. And then this is a system, you know, we develop in a first phase. Again, this is all in-house, so kind of touch time, you know, touch panel type of system to support operation. Use the device, small device, like a mobile. And also, you know, inventory management purpose, we should realize the, not just unit, but accessory kits and then even pallets. So not to lose any single unit in, in the facility, so for full traceability, in other words. And also we s developed, you know, knowledge-based repair system like, like this one. And then, thankfully, you know, the, our brand or well, customer like it, so 2008, we are just allowed to touch the Amazon unit, but 2009, Magnavox, Walmart, Kodak, and then Philips. So we, we grow, thankfully. Uh, but this, oh shoot. And then as a next step, we, uh, we you know, set a goal. So, okay, we went through, we get through the phase one, but as a phase two, we want to achieve the best pro productivity in the industry, reverse logistics industry. And then, you know, another two issues we had. The first one was the, yep. So IT system, which I presented to you, was kind of good, 
but not good enough to differentiate us you know, from others so as a competitor. So this is a one. Another you know, issue we had was you know, we have very nice associates, loyal to us, but no super talented manager. So yeah, if you ask me the definition, so if you're a super talented manager, you don't need a system, you don't need any process. You, you can find a question or issue on the line just on the first look and then solve it. So we, we you know, define that the super talented ma manager. We wish we, ha we have some, but we didn't have. And then the solution or direction we said was, okay, so, but, you know, IT system, again, you know, it's good, but, you know, we had, you know, so much more ideas. So because then we are on the line, and then we, every hour, every minute, we can say, oh, we want to fix this, we want to change this. Idea was there, but the IT, you know, believe it or not, just one or two IT people in, in this, you know, in this, in this company, so we need more IT people, it, but it's hard to find, you know, or, or hire, and we didn't have budget to do so. That's why instead, what we did was, okay, let's train, you know, no IT members, and then in develop, let them develop IT system by themselves. That's the direction we set. And then, I, me too, I was, maybe I'm, I was first in a programmer, in no IT program in FSC, and the, the benefit of it is the, Again, you know, IT people is good, but uh, they don't know the operation. So we have to ask them, we have to let them understand, okay, this is a requirement, this is a need to be done. But uh, another member, in, in general, managing the line, they know, you know, they have so much ideas. And then they want to know about the issue. And then if they get trained to be able to make IT systems themselves, that's a, we thought that's the best direction. And the another one is the develop IT. Oh, the, the, this one, the super, yeah, we didn't have a you know, super talented manager. And, and this is, you know, IT solution was applied. Okay, develop IT system you know, to help, you know, or support manager. So around that time, you know, 2015 or 16, you know, those, I don't know if you, you know, all of you are familiar with those kind of uh, programming languages in, in the market. So HTML, PHP, jQuery, JavaScript, Good stuff. If you use the you know website, you know all those you know your screens designed or developed by those kind of coding or software or program, and also PHP admin that's the server software and the Python TensorFlow that's kind of code or program used for the AI. So amazingly, you know this is all free. So you can download if you want to use it. You can download and then you can start from the first day even today, and then so. Then we realize, okay, once we get them trained, you know, no IT people get trained, cost is numb. And then another benefit of being, you know, here, I mean, around this time is the, you know, YouTube or GitHub or Google, so much generous and kind uh, learning material is out there. And then, of course, you can use book. So we, you know, we did self-training, we set up the training program in turn in-house and then let them train and then so that they can do coding by themselves. Of course, you know, IT department, or on two people just but supported the training system. This is kind of what we did. And then this is a system, you know, we developed. Again, no IT people developed this one. This is clocking system. So, you know, each associates including, you know, Temp Associates has this small tag. This is R R RFID tag. This is very cheap, 10 cents, just 10 cents. And also the scanning system, there's a black one, it's, you know, 20 bucks or so. And every morning they come, they scan it in, and then RFID, this each tag remembers, you know, okay, this tag belongs to me or someone, so with name. And then if you scan it in, you know, this screen pop up, okay, this, okay, th that, tag was you know, Miss, Miss Heathers, and then what she does was, okay, I work for level two DVD repair today. And then once she clicked it, and then the data is sent to the server, and then server can keep track of how many people are working in you know, a real-time manner, and then how many hours are spent to you know, each function. So those are functions, by the way, starting level on TV repair or inventory. So lunch break, short break, you know, even this, you know, this, you know, this system, you know, keep track of, you know, again, the how they use 
their time. So this is developed by non-IT people. And then if you develop this, okay, we have a clocking data. And then we have a, another data to show how many units are processed in a real time and again. And then if you put this together, what you can see is the productivity in every 10 minutes. So the reason why we use this, why we develop this was, you know, we discuss, you know, productivity, you know, every morning. And then one number was shows up. Okay, yesterday's productivity was this. And then the second, you know, two days before that, but it was two, I mean, averaged number. So we want to deep into, you know, look into, you know, when was bad and you know, when was, you know, the, the good. And then we have to, you know, we, and then we have an incentive. Okay, let's make the system sh to show, again, productivity by 10 minutes. And then we can discuss more in detail. Oh, maybe, you know, by the way, you know, this red line shows the touch time. So if the touch time longer, which means the productivity is bad. So, and then in this one, oh, shoot. So you see this high spike in the productivity. And then you want to see this. So you can pinpoint, okay, this was an issue for the yesterday. And then we're happy about this, but the next step was maybe you, know, you, you want to you wanna see you know, what was going on you know, at that time, you know, 10 minutes. So, and then we made another system to capture you know, the operation. You know, the, we put 10 cameras in you know, operation, you know, key process. And then, you know, capture this, you know, picture, picture was taken every 10 seconds. So if you hit, you know, one location or one time, look at, let's say starting, you know, 420 to 430, the, the, the picture belong to that time frame, show, you know, pops up, you know, real time matter. And then you can see what was wrong. So sometimes, you know, people was not there, you know, even if, you know, shift is assigned or design, or people wasn't, you know, people, might be fighting each other, and then they're off the line. Or, you know, the unit it might not be the line. So, as I pointed out in the first slide or second slide, you know, return product is fully mixed in power. So, it's hard to keep, you know, the speed in a uniform manner. It, it's up and down. So, that's why, you know, we have to have this kind of eyes for us. So, then, you know, we, yeah, we take over 30,000 pictures every day you know, for us to review the productivity and then to make the production better for the next day. So again, you know, those systems, you know, they were those ideas were came from floor managers and then floor managerial people who was involved in me, you know, made this system without, you know, having, you know, IT support. So, and then thankfully, you know, we achieved the higher productivity than you know main player in the reverse logistics industry so by thirty to fifty percent, and then Amazon, Target, Walmart made a visit to us and then left comment the best in class, so which is super com you know compliment to us, and then look at the you know this process of history by you know Kaizen or PDCA standpoint, so I can summarize this way. So phase one, you know, okay, we have, you know, in-house IT, so we can, you know, make uh, kind of, uh, let's see, kind of cycle, run the cycle very kind of quick manner. But uh, if you use the, you know, no IT associates, because m more people involved in, more people can start programming, and also the programmer knows the issue very, very exactly. So they have ideas, they know the issue, and then if they can program, this PDCA cycle is very, much quicker and then much larger. And then the, now we are working, FHC working, okay, let's, you know, based on the foundation we have, you know, we designed the process by themselves and also by ourselves. And then we designed, we made a system by ourselves. And then, okay, let's make, let's put AI on the system we have. And then maybe, you know, some of them might be familiar with the, you know, AI or deep learning AI or maybe courses, AI courses is in, in the class or in, in the school. But then you know, we, we started the project, you know, last year, 2017. Before we start that, we thought it's too difficult to implement that by in-house. 
But the uh, good news is, you know, first good news is the low cost, the initial cost. You know, what you need to have is the just server, just four thousand dollars. Uh, one server, one server is good enough to start with. So this is only cost we spent. And also another good, you know, news for you is the core algorithm or program is open, you know, by developer and then ready to use. Sometimes, you know, commercial restriction is applied. But uh, yeah, if you hit the, you know GitHub.com, you can you know pull you know source code of the AI program. So this is another good news. So of course you have to collect the data, or you have to learn, or refresh your <laughs> learning like a mass. You know calculus, you know algebra, statistics, probability a little bit, but not that difficult one. So those are facts of you know deep learning AI. And then what we use AI in the operation is, is this. So I hope you can see this clear. Let me do this. Yeah, we use you know, AI as our eyes, manager's eyes. So let me open this up. So you know, this, you know, this picture itself is taken by a uh, you know, camera, like uh, you know, 30,000, over 30,000 pictures in daily. But this you know, rectangle, is output of AI. So you send the picture to the AI. You have to train AI first, and then so that you know AI can detect people in the picture. So and then if you see this clearly, AI knows okay, this is a picture. Or this is a people. So which means you know two people is on the line. So this information is sent to the manager, you know, by email or by text, you know, to show if you know. The, the system, this system is linked to another system. So then, you know, if we design the shift, okay, four people has to be on the line, and then AI sees just the people, it's understaffed. So that understaffed information is sent to the manager, and then, you know, because manager cannot be on the line, because sometimes they have to be in the meeting, or they have to do something else, they cannot be on the line always. So that's why, you know, we did this, you know, to support you know, as, as their eyes, and then support management. So under staff, short staff, you know, we can detect by AI, and also, let's see, once you train this, you know, this is a, a, the part which I like. So this, you know, it shows a picture. We train the AI to detect the TV. So then, you know, you can use this in AI as your eyes, okay, how many, peop how many TV are on the line, on the shelf? Another good application here is the, okay, this is, you know, this is a cotton box, you know, before you use. So, and then if you take a picture, you know, the picture shows the height of the box. And then you can interpret, okay, this box is 100 or 200. You have to make an interpretation a little bit, but uh, you don't have to use people to count the box. Just take a picture and then let the AI decide, okay, how much, pic how much box you have. And then you can say people and all, all the kind of stuff. And then now what we are doing is the, let me see, this hopefully will. So this is now using the, we can use the even the video to detect. As you see, you know, the TB is kind of, you know, put a rectangle on it. And then you see the moving, right? So, which is this is technology is same technology applied to you know auto driving system, but uh, this is again you know available online. So you can download the GitHub and then you have to tweak a little bit, but uh, it's available. It's available. It's ready for use. So what we're going to do this you know this if you you know use this information nicely you can you know catch the speed of the unit on the line, and then the speed you know directly represents the productivity. So then, you know, we use this, you know, data dynamically and then again, you know, help manager. So if we see product productivity, in it's down, use this information and then, you know, they can jump in, manager can jump in and then fix it. And then similarly, so yeah, this is kind of human version. So as you see, you know, if you train the AI like this, you know, the the movie is information is used, you know, to detect the people, 
in here on the line. And then we designed the operation, you know, so that they don't have to move so frequently. So if you move, you know, out of your, you know, a, a spot, you know, the productivity is down. So then, you know, this, but, you know, if you use this information, you know, you can, as you can imagine, you can see the kind of s the velocity or speed or how off they are. And then, you know, we can use this information as well. So, yeah, this is kind of development we have done so far. And then, you know, on this for this opportunity, you know, we, I try to, you know, you know, kind of summarize and what, where does, you know, innovation, you know, come from, you know, the using the couple of more slides to come. And to me, this is just my per personal opinion, but the innovation, you know, I believe does not only come from technology. So before you create innovation, you need to think through light idea in a light framework, which is, yeah, as marketing, you know, yeah, shows up again. So you have to position yourself, your operation, your company, not in a product of manner, in a in a marketing manner, which is you know, which you know, deliver more value to the customer, and also you fine tune your strength. So you have to make sure, you know, what's my strength, what's our strength. So and is it compatible to against you know, other companies or, or like that? Another. You know, point we have. I want to emphasize the corporate culture is very important as well, and then technology. So you have to put together all four pieces and then think through it, and then light the idea. You know, you're ready for innovation. Light the idea came up, and then okay, let me skip this one. And then before you know, innovation is the you know like 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 him you know. The someone, you know, innovator, very innovative people, you know, had brilliant idea. And then, you know, they can hire so much knowledgeable good people or knowledge. And then, you know, good capital, good mom capital. This is very massive, you know, big gigantic framework. You know, this is to me, you know, innovation. Yeah, this is still innovation, but this is innovation model for past. But right now, Again, you know, knowledge is available. So if you have an interest and you just, you know, start searching and also you can come back to the school like Ivy Tech and then now you don't have to limit yourself. I am this specialist. I am that specialist. You don't have to. You can add on, you know, so much knowledge because, you know, before knowledge was kind of blocked by academics or company. But now it's, it's no longer that way. So it's free and then it's open. So knowledge is not that important. It's up to you. And then capital is, you know, so many you know, sources of funding. So you don't have to worry about that much as before. You know, again, you know, AI is, in particular, AI is a startup cost is very low. But you have to have a good idea to light fit it to your business model. And then, yeah, you can make an innovation. So, yeah, to create an innovation, an idea has never been as important as it is now. And then you can find, and then this is another suggestion or another finding, you know, or mine is you can find your idea in your operation. So, because then you can observe so many mistakes or so many try and errors or so many things. This is your advantage because no one does have such an information. It's not the data or experience, it's not so anywhere. This is just yours. So, and then you should take free advantage of the situation or data, and then you can come up with idea. And then you can make a you can make an innovation. That's kind of thing will happen. And another suggestion I would add is the, you know, as we did, and as, you know, as, and I feel I so very strongly, so we design process, you know, from very scratch by ourselves. And then we have an in-house IT, we have in-house AI, which is, you know, flexible, customizable to, you know, to anything. And then as we have ownership of all those, you know, it's easy to put on new pieces like quantum computing or some other, you know, new, you know, cutting edge stuff. You have, if you have ownership of all this, you know, you can easily add it on. 
but, but you know, if you just buy some technology someone else, it's hard to do so. That's why you know while you can make a good innovation, good success, but if you buy, if you can make a shortcut in that easy come, easy go style, you know you can make big tree or big flower, you know, by doing so. Yeah. And and then FSC, you know, we, you know, maybe, you know, I just emphasize you know, IT or AI part, but uh, we, you know, if I may go back to the slide, you know, okay, if you come up with idea, four things, you know, you have to consider. One is marketing, the second is the fine strength, but the fine, you know, fine tune strength. And then for us, you know, we thought through, you know, what is our strength, real strength on us? So IT or AI might be the one, but if you, compare you know, our IT capability with IT capability in a Silicon Valley, they are a lot higher than us. So that's why you know, we use IT or AI, but we defined okay, our strengths is the how to treat people, how to make team, you know, productive team. That is our strengths, you know, we, which we um, have set. So in order to do so, you know, we have, you know, four factors here. So the first one, yeah, let me skip first. The second one is the, you know, IT and robot we use to allow remote workforce. So this is kind of interesting robot. This is not expensive, $15, $1,500 or $2,000. <laughs> and then we have a remote operation in uh, San Francisco or, you know, the LA. And then this has kind of lower, you can control this robot. And then, as the on the top, you can see the screen, and then the operator can show your face, you know, on the screen. And then operat operator can see by using camera what's going on the operation. So then, you know, she, you know, she's in LA, by the way. She joined the conference in you know, Columbus. You know, she woke up, you know, by by this machine, and then, you know. Sit, sit next to the table, and then you know she joins the session. And also, she can walk through the warehouse remotely, and then she can catch what's going on. And then you know we don't have to worry about okay, he's she's in remote or he's in remote. The reason we do this because we you know we want to retain good people. So sometimes you know, people left the company, leave the company due to kind of moving or you know personal or family reason. But we want to retain good people, you know as long as possible. That's why, you know, we thought through, okay, let's use this robot, you know, so that they can work remotely without any issue, you know, even managing the line. So this is the first one, the second one. And the first one is the, you know, this is kind of coming from in my philosophy, but we try to assign tasks to align each associate's interest. So because, you know, we, if you do, you know, anything, you know, what you like, you know, your performance is always the best. Right? So that's why you know, we don't you know, force or push someone, okay, you have to do this, and I wouldn't do so. Because we listen to you know, what, what you want to do, and then what's your career goal, and then align their interest to each task. And that is part of our management, that's our way, and, then because, and this is good for them, and also in the long term, good for us. And then it's a win-win relationship, and then market, labor market is so tight, and then this will help us, you know, to be able to retain good people. So this is the second one. And the third one is the fair warehouse. So it might be odd to you, but uh, we have a data. We have a capture data or, you know, the picture, again, you know, 30,000 picture, you know, every day. You know, we can use this as a kind of proof or evidence. I, sometimes, you know, if, you know, someone, you know, come back to us and say, hey, you know, she hit me or, uh, you know, because of him, you know, operation was pretty bad. So, but uh, we listen and then we, we are able to come back to the picture and then check, you know, what she said was really true. Sometimes, you know, 100% true, but sometimes half true, sometimes is, you know, entirely not true. So, but uh, if, you know, all associates are aware, okay, you know, it, it's just a waste of time to try to teach, you know, teach, no, no, no. no tease, you know, the, let's say, try to make a lie or, you know, fall, false or f not true story. Th this is just a waste of time because we have evidence. And then what we ask to even temp associates to is 
to make idea. Please, you know, make a good suggestion, make a good idea. So because, you know, creating idea or, you know, the most important part, you know, innovation, making idea, you know, come up with idea is, at least now, is only human can do. And then AI cannot take over. I don't think it will happen, you know, very quickly. Maybe in the future, in you know, 100 years, but right now. So we have to position the human ourselves, okay? We are here to, and then the reason we can hear is the, to make a good idea. So that's why you know, we want to roll out this concept to all temp associates even. And then, yeah, that kind of thing, you know, we, again, you know, this is because we said this is our strengths, and then this is kind of framework for us. And then once we make good system, we can differentiate from others a lot, lot better. And this is the last slide. And then, you know, FSC is a company, even small size, but uh, we have to be, this is kind of fundamental uh, expectation to the company, not to mention, we have to be remain, you know, we have to be competent to remain in the industry. And also we have to create value to the customer and also shareholder, you know, we have to generate profit to them. This is the very basic function. But another function which, you know, the company has to take on is the enhance and train people through the job. Because the, the we are aware of, you know, the education cost is too high. The Ivy Tech is so generous, but in general, if you enroll, you know, five, four years private college, you have to pay $40,000 a year. That's too much. So that's why, you know, we should use company as a training opportunity. And also, you know, we want to, we should use as a company, you know, we should use company to solve social problems. So I didn't touch in detail, uh, but the uh, return, you know, industry has a big problem because the return ratio, I don't know, you know, if you're familiar with this, but if you buy unit or if you sell something online, how much, you know, return you have to expect? That, that's high, 30%. 30% customer make a return. So if you sell merchandise online, that's not sustainable. The thanks to that, you know, reverse logistics market is growing, but it's not sustainable at all. So we are now in the reverse logistics industry, FSG, and then we have to come up with some solution to kind of win-win and then, you know, ease the problem. So that's what FSG is now working on, discussing. And then maybe we, we will, uh, we are planning to uh, start up multiple locations, not just Columbus, you know, Indiana or West Coast or South. So, because, you know, for not just for the business, but for the, but also for the training people or create job and also solve the social problems. So, the tank fee in the near future, so uh, if she opened up the location, Indiana police or th this area, uh, Fort Wayne area, and uh, hopefully we can, I can work together with someone in, in this room. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Now, I think we've had three of the people introduced, but we only have two people left here to introduce. Uh, Lou, who is now just set up, setting down right here. He is a substitute for what we had originally uh, put into the program of Bob Parker. Parker is on our program for the uh, AART program, the Advanced Automation Robotics program. We have at Ivy Tech one of our premier programs uh, that leads, uh, that was actually developed with uh, Toyota uh, in collaboration with Toyota, so a lot of Japanese influence in the development of that program. Lou, or Lou is going to substitute because Bob's at a, uh, a professional development training uh, up in Wisconsin for Industry 4.0 as we're preparing for the uh, future. And then our second uh, new individual in front here is John Sampson. John is our president of the Northeast uh, Indiana Regional Partnership here. Uh, I was actually very interested, John, as I was looking back some of your early background right there, a Naval Academy graduate. Uh, aer aerospace engineer, or uh, in that line anyway, and a nuclear engineer operator as well. Uh, I was fascinated. I did not know that. Couldn't, uh, couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. I, I see that. I see that. Uh, and you dwelled in some real deep areas there that were tough, too. Trust me, I know, because uh, I've had some education in that myself. 
So with that introduction right there, what I'd first of all like to do is open up to anybody in the audience that first of all may have a question that they would like to give to the group on the panel right here. Mr. Bell over here. Hi, I'm Andy Bell. I'm the department chair for the engineering program here at Tech. Here's a couple of my students. <coughs> so my question deals with students is what specific skills should students have that we should be teaching them to support this, this effort? What, what kind of skills should we have? <laughs> I think Ivy Tech is already you know, working on this, but uh, to, I did, you know, let's see. Uh, I saw some kind of comment on the slide, but thinking logically, you know, critical thinking is general kind of skill set, but it helps you always. So because, you know, in a Kaizen or PDCA cycle, so you have to, first of all, you have to find out the root cause of the problem and then, you know, start thinking the solution. So if you flip over, it doesn't work. So in order to do so, you know, not just show your idea, but the critically, you know, analyze, you know, what's, you know, what's the issue, you know, what's the root cause, and then come up with a solution. So in, in order to do so, critical thinking or logical thinking is the most important, you know, kind of skill set, which this is, you know, from, from my opinion, from my opinion. I have to point out, uh, Mr. Bell, that I was uh, gave the tour today, and I inadvertently went by your laboratory. Now hold everything; don't don't get shook up too much because I was reprimanded that we didn't go in the engineering program, and we went back to the engineering program, and they were studying the robots, and were very impressed with what you were doing in the stu with the students on building the programs, 3D printer included in the laboratory. So, kudos to your program right there; they gave it high kudos. Other questions from the audience here? One other response, though, that might, might be helpful before we go on, it just, uh, we hear a lot from employers that, uh, so technical skills is one aspect of what they need, and the critical thinking is certainly important, but when it comes to implementing solutions and working together with teams, the more that uh, the, the students get experience in working with others, cooperative experiences, um, uh, teamwork, uh, problem solving, those kinds of things, getting, getting the team to work together to find solutions understand that some team members will see problems from different perspectives. So getting that interaction and working together in teams to create uh, solutions that may be more comprehensive than, an, than a single uh, approach uh, is useful, I think, as well. Yes, in, order, in addition to that, as I, I saw that uh, class this morning and then I'm impressed with the team uh, teamwork uh, learning skill because uh, when we're talking about a skill gap, in, in uh, traditionally, there was a kind of, see, uh, in addition to the see, uh, skill learning, but also the craftsmanships, uh, relationship is quite important. But uh, nowadays, the craftsmanships acquiring is so difficult because of the changing society, changing the uh, available technology. So that the uh, student learning each other is quite important. Uh, for to to address to the solving problem, so that uh, I find out this morning. Thank you very much. Yeah, I th I, that's one thing I I can point out very clearly right here. Uh, the collaboration, teamwork effort that's put in our classrooms is phenomenal, and uh, the employers are very grateful for what we're doing with that. Lou, would you like to expand on that? Uh, what we're doing in collaboration. Yes, in uh, quite a few of our classes um, in advanced manufacturing and even industrial technology, we have uh, projects in the classroom, even with the beginning first semester classes. And these range from discovery-based to project-based learning. And in some cases, we'll throw the idea out to the students here, find out how this works and how would you fix it, and let them work in teams and groups to find and fix the problem and solve it. It works very, very well. Yeah, I might add to that right there. Those are very ill-defined projects that they're assigned. They're given very little information. They have to do everything. And it is very challenging to them. But what's very interesting is they thoroughly enjoy it. 
they thoroughly enjoy those challenges and they do very well in them. And I might add that some of them don't want to stop. Our classes are four hours long and I can easily sometimes use five and six hours, believe it or not. And the pride is amazing too. I was here on a Friday, which we have very few classes on Fridays. And uh, I was in my office and, and a student came in, one of uh, your students, Lou. And he said, can I go to my, can I get in the lab, please? And I said, sure, well, what do you want? And he says, well, I have my girlfriend here. I want to show her my project. That's pride. That's pride. And so that, that shows you that they're enjoying it and they're getting a lot out of the project in my mind right there. Other questions from the audience here? I have a question here for Mr. Tata. I heard that you worked on an initiative on workforce development and surveyed Japanese companies with operations in Indiana. Can you share any notable discoveries about the current challenges these companies face and what were the main takeaways? Okay, so uh, the last year we conducted uh, the, the survey among the Japanese corporation who has uh, operation in the uh, in state of Indiana. And I scattered, uh, we scattered 166 companies headquarter in Japan uh, to find out what is the issue they have. And then uh, returning ratios about more than 50 company uh, return ratios. It's a quite positive sign. And also, there we, uh, the first of all, there was a kind of enthusiasm to keep uh, the, the operation in the state of Indiana and then uh, continue to make more new investment. But at the same time, they uh, find out that some kind of workforce development, the labor shortage is quite an issue. And then uh, 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 new technologies are available, new markets are available, so that uh, uh, we found out the major company uh, quite good at to address those issues through their own art and center or uh, in-house job training. But uh, SMEs, tier one, tier two, has a hard time and to find out uh, the new opportunities. For those who are stick to the old uh, t uh, framework, still, <coughs> Sorry, uh, too difficult to change. But at the same time, see, in, uh, the SME are classified in twofold. One is a kind of family-owned SME, a very the traditional uh, way of thinking and then stick to their own business. But uh, tier one, tier two, uh, another uh, uh, company are facing to challenge as well as the new opportunities. So uh, they are ready, uh, ready to uh, change to the, uh, the new uh, uh, job opportunity, new market opportunity. But at the same time, you see, the boss uh, had a hard time to find out the proper uh, workforce uh, in, uh, in their own production site. So that is a kind of starting point our uh, reached out uh, the, uh, the initiative together with Ivy Tech. Thank you very good. Anybody else in the audience have any more questions at this point? Uh, yes, back here in the back. Uh, I don't have a microphone for you, but... Uh, um, when it comes to the workforce, are you searching for um, professionals that have a degree, um, for instance, from Ivy Tech or a four-year institution, or are you looking for people who are part of the Did everybody hear the question okay? Okay. Okay. I'm, so, uh, this is a kind of proper teamwork building. Of course, that's, uh, for example, IB Tech certificate ensure has a kind of certain credit from the beginning. But uh, traditionally, uh, see Japanese companies uh, operation wise is on the job training so that uh, each company has its own uh, see, uh, training style, management style, so that uh, sometimes, you see, in case of the transition of the existing position, yeah, we, we can address to the kind of certain proper uh, on-the-job training st uh, style. So that, uh, it's a kind of personality or capability uh, we care. 
But in case of the new segment, in, uh, uh, for example, for automobile sector to the like life uh, industry or medical science, so that uh, we don't have enough resources to judge uh, the, the new workforce uh, uh, requirement. So in such a case, yeah, some degree or a certificate might help. But how about uh, Sasaki-san? So the IFSC is in the reverse logistics uh, industry. So it's again you know, in between manufacturing, low, low level of manufacturing and then warehousing. So I don't think you know warehousing is kind of uh, taught in any, you know, the kind of college, you know, community college, college like that. But in general, in the college degree or associate, you know, degree helps as long as you know you can apply or you can, yeah, you can apply to, you know, new 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 issue or kind of real problem. So if you just have an outages and then it's not applicable to you know solve the real problem. It's the value is not that high, but if you observe what you run in the college, and then you can ready to apply your knowledge, your skills, so including the you know critical thinking, that's so valuable. So I think that's a big advantage being kind of enrolling the college or community college or Ivy Tech college, and for you to be ready to make a jump start and then creating value of the real life, you know, real problem solving from the first day. So, and application, you know, readiness is, I think that's a key. Do you understand? Do I, I understand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I was going to ask, add to that, uh, which would you prefer? Would you prefer to have a ready trained individual that we sent to you for employment? Or would you rather have an individual that you would rather send to us to train while they're employed in your corporation? Uh, yeah, good question. Since you're in the reverse mo mode, I'm going to go reverse, <laughs> reverse here. <way. laughs> OK. Yeah, I think it's kind of both. So yeah, if you, know, you have you know, ready, fully ready trained in employees, you know, candidates, that's, you know, it's more than welcome. And also, if you have a program to train you know, our current employee, you know, logical thinking, because, you know, we do o OJT manner, but uh, we don't spend, you know, 100% time for just training. So it's, you know, efficient sometimes to, okay, after six o'clock, so you just work on or just train yourself, focus, and then maybe, you know, th the productivity efficiency is high and then, then can come back quickly to us and then as more advanced, you know, the labor associates to us, that, that's the work. Okay. Also, uh, I'm Katsuto Hisano from Embassy of Japan. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Uh, related, uh, related with, regarding uh, the Tada and, uh, Mr. Tada and Mr. Sasaki's answer, uh, I think uh, uh, it is re uh, somehow related with the uh, Japanese uh, work style or uh, tradition. Uh, because uh, so it is common in especially a large company to uh, hire new graduate or uh, at uh, once uh, uh, collectively in every April. April, uh, when the graduate, uh, um, every student graduate uh, their school, high school and uh, uh, universities, and uh, start their job in April in Japan. And uh, the it, uh, company wants to uh, the new graduate to work long, uh, work a uh, long time. So they want, uh, they would like to, so uh, uh, have our uh, education, our job, educa job education, and a job instruction to the new or uh, uh, so train graduate. So uh, the, the each company has a, so, uh, their original way of uh, instruction and the job training. So uh, they were, uh, th so uh, so that uh, the new graduate will uh, so stay in the same company and promote in the same company and to retire uh, in their sixties. So it is. Uh, so I think uh, it is. Uh, it is typical uh, Japanese boxer. Uh, so actually, the situation has uh, become changed, but uh, the, uh, uh, yet uh, so still the uh, in the common large uh, company 
uh, so keeps such uh, so tradition. So maybe the, uh, the uh, as Sasaki san mentioned, the uh, so some uh, personality uh, on the job, on the job training, so, such as a, uh, including including personality or some uh, original skills is related to uh, so Japanese uh, traditional work style. Thank you. Yeah, I have a question down here in front. I just I wanna point uh, the question to Mr. Zaki, President and the CEO. If you have any sm a story that or a solution you guys have uh, in the past and b make big change. I think uh, yeah, I, I mentioned in my presentation, but uh, you know, train noisy people to let them you know make a program was I think was a big big you know the you know train noisy people you know learn how to program and then let them program you know to solve their day to day issue that you know I think you know, I show you the clocking system or show the product that was done by non IT people that was a big big you know change you know for for us and then we have that one kind of I have a one instance by the way you know related to do this you know around 2000 let's see 16 or 15 I was in the hospital by the way so I have some serious I'm okay now but that's at that time so I for one week, I was in hospital. I, I cannot drink, I cannot eat, so it's torture to me. So, and then, you know, what I was able to do was j just reading or learning. So I then I hit the Amazon and then order ten book of you know PHP or HTML. So I have never learned the programming, and then I read through everything during you know I was in hospital, and then realized, oh, this is not that difficult. So it's not difficult to me. Maybe it's not. It's true to our associates, non IT you know, trained people. And also, I checked the cost, and cost is almost free. And then, when just light out, just light out of the hospital, I call for a meeting, and then let's do this. And then you know, everybody get, get intimidated and then get scared, but like that. But uh, you know, you don't, you lose nothing. So try it, and then if you get something, if you learn something, you know, you get, you know, you are capable enough. And then, if you're capable, even if you know, you know FSU goes under, so you have a good chance to get, you know, to keep, you know, keep doing good job, you know, remain a good job, or even promote it. So that's good opportunity. Again, you know, my message was: don't limit yourself. Don't limit. Okay, this is my job. Or this is all. So it's it's not good. So because you know, if you do this, you know, AI eventually will take over your job. So that's why you know, don't limit yourself. Don't expand your possibility and then you know IT programming I think that's easy to start and then very efficient so I'm hoping you know answering two questions for those who didn't hear this was Ollie down here in front and Ollie's in the engineering program and I think you brought up a very a very fascinating point here Ollie that storytelling can be the easiest way to remember something from a classroom in case studies examples because you take that, you lock it into your brain a lot more than you do technical information that is just taught to you. So thank you for passing that message on. So if any of the others up here have stories like that, I think it could be very helpful for students in the audience and us professionals in the audience as well. Uh, so I know Mr. Tadas talks about teaching deans. I'm always learning. I'm always learning. So if you have any good stories for me, I would appreciate them. Um, I wanted to go back to Lou right here and ask him to, uh, going back to the model that we have developed in the AART program over here, the Advanced Automation Robotics Program, how we integrate both the classroom, the laboratory, and then internship uh, into the program at the same time. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a big question. Uh, I'll try to answer it. Um, by the time the students get to the second semester, they've proven themselves to be, uh, I guess, 
school worthy and the employees want or employers want students that are uh, not quitters so I think that second semester um, standing represents a willingness to continue and they have some discipline they've already established some um, history with their attendance and their grades and we have uh, employers that are looking for those students and we just send them the information and let the students do the interviewing um, and right now we're probably I'm guessing 10 20 percent internship um, and those those are old numbers I haven't heard any latest numbers but um, uh, we integrate that student into the workforce and then he comes to class and then uses his knowledge gained on the job to uh, troubleshoot to solve the problem fix the problem and he shares his knowledge with other students in his work group or in the classroom and that is uh, that is especially powerful and that's almost in line with hearing a story uh, I just saw this problem by connecting this to this yesterday and it worked he brings that to the classroom and you can't teach that that is very very powerful I'm going to go to a little different vein here, Mr. Sampson. I'm going to bring you back into the discussion right here. Northeast Indiana, a heavy manufacturing field. What are the number one, two, and three problems we have? Talent, talent, talent. What do we need to do to get more talent into the field so we can have Northeast Indiana grow? Uh, yeah, talent, <laughs> talent, talent. That's a, that's a challenge across the board and not, not unique to Northeast Indiana for sure. But uh, one thing that we're discovering along the way, uh, to lose earlier point, the closer the employers and the manufacturers can be with the student learning process, if there's co-op experiences, if there's internships, if there's uh, lab, lab work that can be done at the employer, not only does it give the student a chance to uh, get connected emotionally with the work going on in, in an employer's workplace, but it also gives the employer a chance to witness students uh, firsthand and those that would fit with the culture it gives them a firsthand exposure some of our employers are saying that when they have intern experiences they're hiring anywhere between 20 between 20 and 40 percent of those students they're building a relationship that leads to full-time employment so it's good for the employer and good for the student as well and the other thing um, i was impressed with your comments about uh, solving social problems in your presentation um, employers are very much I think connected to the health of the community nowadays. And there's communities all across Northeast Indiana that are investing in quality of place for the, for the sole purpose of making sure that their community is not only workable, but livable. And uh, so when, community, when employers and manufacturers get involved, they're investing back into a community quality place project. Um, those kinds of things are very beneficial to the local community. And we think are in the self-interest of that employer to be helping solve those problems in local communities. So um, we've been making a concerted effort in our region to elevate the quality of place of our communities, strictly focused on making sure that we can attract and retain uh, the young and uh, aging employers, uh, employees together. So both of those, I think, are worthwhile efforts is keeping the employers closely connected to the student experience and also asking employers to participate in helping address community challenges that, that confront them day in and day out. Thank you. We get a lot of um, mix of students in age from right out of high school to 50, 50 plus. Um, to the employers up here, how, how would you handle trying to integrate an older employee into um, a new skill or a new job area? Uh, one of the issues uh, we have found was uh, how to ensure the quality of life. Because of, uh, see, it's, so there is a kind of people who uh, so seek for the s uh, good skill and the learning, a lot of things. But uh, when see, uh, it's not only the employer uh, who offer the, the, the uh, quality of life. Because we can through the like, uh, uh, lifetime 
employment, a pension fund, or, or raise a uh, salary, something like that. That is possible. But uh, in others, uh, see social impact. I think, uh, see, uh, I, I have a kind of diverse question to you that how in this region can improve their quality of life for the potential worker. So that, that is an issue that uh, we can solve uh, together. Uh. Well, uh, w one of the things that we're confronting, um, s so as our population demographic has changed over the years, um, I think employers that are, they're becoming more creative and flexible about how they structure work schedules and so forth. Uh, maybe flex time is important, uh, maybe alternating work schedules and so forth. I, and not only quality of life in the community, but quality of life in the workplace. Um, I think employees care more about those things. They're not just at work to earn, but they, it's something they want to enjoy and be engaged in. Uh, so I think that um, to the extent that employers can look for creative ways to be attentive to the needs of employees, whether they're young or old, that flexibility, I think, means a lot more to the population today than uh, perhaps it did uh, when the, we were a little more uh, structured in our approach. So, yes, please. The part of the project we are working on is the, we have a system, you know, to to be able to see, okay, if we have a good production, good productivity or bad productivity, we can link, you know, okay, who are involved in, you know, because in general, you know, reverse logistics, a team, teamwork, you cannot, in general, pinpoint, okay, this job, okay, he's good worker, he's not good worker. So, but uh, again, you know, we have a clocking system, then we can link, you know, kind of uh, who are again, involved in, you know, this, you know this time frame with good productivity and the other time frame you know with you know bad productivity and then we can evaluate you know even you know temple associates uh in a fair manner with numbers and then okay you're good you're not good so i think it's kind of encouraging you know for them to be with us because you know, if i were you know hired by someone I want to be treated fair. So if I do a good job, I want to get you know credit or appreciation like that. So in order to use in by using the IT system, so we do so much effort to make that system or what that environment you know happen on the warehouse. I have a question in the back here, but I'm going to first of all make a comment to all you employers out here. If you have a retiring, aging individual, a boomer that's going to retire, we need adjuncts and they are the best instructors in the world. Someone who spent 40 year career in business, we can train them to teach our students and they have stories, Ollie, because they've been in the industry, they've seen the battle scars, they know what goes on out there and they are very good instructors. So to my workforce employers out there, we need help because our population is growing and we love our adjuncts. They're our, they're our life, you know, our bread and butter. They close the gate. Yep. Question back here. Yeah, I guess I, I more had a comment uh, to the discussion that was just taking place on a previous question. Uh, Keith Gilman, whether with the Rural Wabash County, the Economic Development Group for Wabash County. Um, to your question about the second chance, uh, you know, employers are retraining adult workers. Um, we have a Japanese company in our community that has really been a nice case study for how that can happen, and uh, OG Intertech, uh, which is part of OG Holdings, um, uh, OG had experienced, I mean, to kind of, to Mr. Connor, to your comments at, at the very beginning about, you know, solving that workforce crisis and looking ahead to what those two big, what those big issues are facing uh, the Japanese em uh, employers in, in Indiana. And they had experienced around a 60% turnover rate for new employees. Uh, and they've been able to reduce that to less than 20% uh, over the course of two years. And one of the things that they've done that is by focusing on those older workers that they can bring in. Um, it's not hard work that they do. It's uh, kind of light assembly, that kind of thing. Um, but getting back to that quality of life that you were just talking about, one of the things that they've done was they had to basically revamp what their entire hiring practice was um, and including those things about how do you improve the community? And so, um, one of the th they, you know, they instituted the entire system of 
how they get feedback from their employees. They gave them two extra days, uh, paid, uh, paid days off for them to do community volunteering work. So as long as they're doing something like that, they can get a couple of extra vacation days. Um, uh, all of those kinds of things, bringing in a pizza party and uh, having the managers grill out for them one day a month. So all of those kinds of things that really don't have a large cost, but I think is a nice evolution of a Japanese company seeing what needs to happen for the workforce that, they're, that they have now. Um, and they've been able to vastly reduce that turnover and so much so that uh, or, I mean, we're heading to Japan here in a couple of weeks uh, to visit with them, to talk to them about how they've done that. So um, it may be worth looking into. Another beautiful story right there. Good story. Thank you. So many international students that come to study in the state of Indiana, like Mizrahi up here front. And so to have employers, especially in the SME fields, to consider hiring those talents who are already here on a student visa, I think we have a lot of employers who are hesitant when it comes to that, especially when it comes to sponsorship and understanding the investment that goes into it. Um, but it is, in fact, a, a need that we have, especially here in the Northeast. And in particularly Fort Wayne directly, we have a lot of diversity. We have a lot of uh, un unexploited talent laying out there, in my mind, that we need to be tapping into for these industries. So that's a good point to get into. We need to really get into those. We get a lot of those students here, but not near the depth that we need to be getting into. Thank you. Tony? Uh, my name is Tony Rainey. I'm a faculty member at our School of Business. I, I have two questions. Uh, one is, uh, is the student building system that you have, it has been in uh, I should say that word. Um, can you talk, or spoken about using it to watch productivity, but from a manager's, manager's perspective, do you use that tool at all for your employees to look at it so they can generate ideas on how to improve their own productivity? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's a it's open for anyone in the warehouse, and then not just manager. So, and then we not maybe yeah we we are taking step by step. So, but we are ready to involve even you know temp associates even first day on the floor to review the data, and then you know kind of collect idea you know from them. So again you know we. Uh, we're going to, we are trying to spend as much as time possible to create idea, not just, you know, managerial people, not, you know, employee or not, the temple or either way. So, because that is, I think that's uh, kind of rewarding, you know, not just for the company and also the, to the employee involved, with, involved in this operation. Uh, the message about a uh, uh, Japanese company in the U.S. So, uh, uh, so uh, actually, uh, so Japanese uh, Japan government uh, government of Japan has uh, so uh, some uh, so in, in the United States uh, uh, besides uh, our embassy, uh, so some uh, uh, so uh, some nineteen uh, con uh, consulate uh, uh, consulate office, uh, including Chicago consulting office is exists exist and uh, so uh, each office is uh, each office uh, is uh, uh, sorry uh, you know each office is in uh, in charge of the each area and uh, so now uh, they uh, keep uh, keep in touch with uh, so e uh, the company in each uh, uh, area and uh, they are uh, so sometimes uh, make a uh, advice and uh, uh, so make uh, sometimes uh, uh, so uh, some uh, so uh, so uh, sometimes uh, PR so assist to our public relations to uh, so advantage of uh, Japanese companies or Japanese work style and uh, and <coughs> if uh, so uh, some events is uh, held 
uh, Japanese company, uh, Japanese uh, government uh, so introduces the, to the all over the regions. Yeah. Thank you. So maybe that's a question addressed to the government. I think I feel bound to follow up to what my colleague uh, in the Washington DC talked about. So uh, wh whether the Japanese government uh, provides direct assistance to individual companies? The answer, simple answer is no. Uh, because they are really uh, trying to work their uh, own, own uh, foot, so to speak. And uh, most of the companies are successful. But we are trying to facilitate the good investment climate in one way or another. So sometimes we try to speak to, say, state government about uh, some rules, regulations. And uh, through Washington DC in particular, we talk about those tariff issues. So those are very important uh, framework in which the, the Japanese companies would continue to be successful. So earlier I talked about these tariff issues, I talked about the importance of TPP and so forth. And we also talked about the importance of NAFTA uh, continuing to be in place. So because these are essential framework, trade agreement, uh, in which the Japanese companies uh, continue to be successful, Japanese companies are continuing to be make investment in the US, so particularly in, uh, in the Midwest, particularly in Indiana. And on top of that, yes, we do some uh, visits. We do listen to those people's uh, talks, what are the issues, and so forth. Uh, why we do this uh, grassroots caravan with Jetro Chicago visiting various parts of Indiana, Illinois, and others? Because we want to listen more uh, to what they, are, they need in order for their business to continue to thrive. So, and also, uh, we visit those companies together with business community, together with local political leaders, so that uh, they would be better understood uh, why Japanese companies are here, what the Japanese companies needs are, uh, what the sort of conditions Japanese companies want to meet uh, down the line. But these efforts will continue to uh, do. But for individual company, do we do specific uh, you know, support? Uh, we don't have policy to, to do that, but in more broader terms, we continue to support uh, Japanese companies so that the economic business partnership between Japan and Midwest Japan and Indo Indiana would continue to uh, survive and uh, thrive. Thank you. We're going to come in here. Sorry. One comment and one, uh, one another reverse question to you all. But uh, the comment is that like, traditionally, uh, w I see uh, th that is another Japanese agency, but the Jetro, for example, uh, assist the Japanese company's retired person as uh, a trade expert and send each state to develop the good uh, relationship between the local states and the, ja the mar foreign market, especially j to Japan, so that in, in such a way, to facilitate the uh, the pro see the mar uh, market finding or facilitate the kind of creation of a new industry. In such a uh, see effort, uh, Japanese government has uh, uh, see indirectly uh, 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 offer to the state. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, and then the question to you is that that is the case in the Chinese government and the European community has a special treaty for uh, again the retired expert, and the when the expert, for example, the Germany, who work for the BMW or Mercedes, uh, can uh, 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 agree to uh, come to the China to make a kind of training or uh, assist in the production line. There is a special tax uh, incentive for the individually. So that is a case in, in between China and Germany. And then uh, that somehow, yeah, uh, we like to have such a kind of uh, tax incentive. But uh, between the United States and, uh, for example, the Germany, is there any kind of similar tax incentive for the, the person uh, expert? No. John, you'd know better than that most. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. And um, 
I, I will say from, from, from the viewpoint of an economic development uh, professional, and I'm looking at Scott Naltner from Greater Fort Wayne, Inc., and Keith Gillenwater with the Wabash, Grow Wabash organization, um, no other country has been so intentional about building relationships with the United States and the Midwest in particular uh, to make sure that there's alignment and culture and understanding and building of long-term relationships. Um, our relationship with uh, uh, Teresa uh, Kolzak and the, the Japan Association with Indiana, um, all of these are efforts that Japan has been active in. It's, it's not just, uh, you know, oh, by the way, you've been intentional about building these relationships to support, at the end of the day, a business investment in our community, but I think it's a deeper friendship than just doing business in the communities that I really respect what Japan has done, and Council General Ito has been over here uh, twice in the last few months. I mean, it's just been, um, it, it, it's very overt and very intentional and very planned, and I think very productive in terms of our relationship with Japan. Well, we've passed 4.30 here, so I'm gonna to try to make a few comments here to end up with here. Whether it be Japan company or American company, the one thing that we desperately need is talent. And what I find very valuable from today's discussion, for my purposes anyway, is learning a better cross-cultural element that we can include in our classroom so we can be working both with a Japanese company and our American companies as well. Last week I was at a meeting down in Florida for uh, workforce education and one of our major speakers was a lady from IBM. They have an initiative called a New Collar Jobs Initiative. How many people are familiar with that? Very few of you, if none of you. Uh, Gina, Jenny Ramanetti, who is President, CEO, and Chairman of IBM introduced the term a few years ago. New collar jobs are what we're producing here at Ivy Tech, pretty much straightforwardly. It's not a four-year degree, it's not a high school graduate. It's those individuals that have training with skills and soft skills to be in the workforce to help our companies, Japanese companies, American companies grow. They put a tremendous effort into developing this new collar job initiative right here. They're calling them new collar jobs. They're not blue collar jobs. They're not white collar jobs. They're new collar, probably no collar in most of these workers because <laughs> they wear t-shirts, right Lou? <laughs> Uh, so therefore, we need to work together to develop this talent. I appreciate the information I've received as far as the cultural aspect of it. I've always been a student of culture uh, my whole career, uh, but it adds more to our dimension that we're providing here for our Ivy Tech students in producing these new collar jobs. And you know, we bring students through here. Uh, we had about 300 high school students through here last Friday. And many of those, 90% of those, were excited by the opportunities that exist. We've also got another dimension we have to reach out to, and that's their parents, to convince them that these new color jobs are not the blue color jobs of the past. They're something new and exciting, and they not only provide a dimension that will help them change the world, they're exciting. Uh, companies, employers are working with the students, and they pay very well on top of that. So you can't have a better avenue right there. And when I bring up salaries, uh, people go, you're not, you, are you serious? Uh, I told my wife about some of this and it took her six months to believe me and I've been married to her forever. Uh, so she didn't even believe me that you could make that much with a two year degree. Now my daughter, a lawyer, is sending our grandson to Ivy Tech, just that simple. We gotta educate everybody to what we have here, the new color jobs, the opportunities that exist. And thank for you, the Japanese uh, people that have joined us today as far as introducing us to your ex uh, beautiful examples, stories that you've provided to us that we can use in our classroom. John, thank you for your information. Lou, thank you. Thank all of you uh, for participating here today. Nicole, do you have any other final comments? Oh. There is one other final comment, and she just showed me this beautiful green sheet that you can't miss in a million years uh, sitting in front of you right there. It is a very short evaluation, and they would appreciate that you complete that before you leave. I assume Nicole will collect those down here in front, or Sarah back here in the back can collect them as well. Sarah, did you have any final comments? Oh, right, thank you. Yeah, there are refreshments right next door in our creative incubator. So get creative when you're in there, come up with some good ideas, give them to us. We love them. <laughs>
Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Nicole.